What up everybody, it is your boy Jabbar back again with another video and this time we will be talking about if Bill Street, or I'll be talking about if Bill Street could talk. This movie came out, I want to say, 20, it came out 2018, 2018, at the end of 2018 <clears throat> and it was produced and directed and filmed by Barry Jenkins, uh, starred Regina King, um, I guess she's pretty much the big name out of the movie. Um, at least the only one I knew. The other ones were kind of unknown. Except for Tiana Paris. I do know Tiana Paris from like some Spike Lee films. New Spike Lee films. Like I think he, she was in Chirac. And she was also in a couple of other things. But I can't really think of them right now. Um, but those are kind of the two big name artists. I did know The Father. Um from uh he's been in a lot of little stuff never anything major um but i know i remember him from um what was it it was birth of a nation birth of a nation it was birth of a nation <clears throat> and then the other two uh the, the characters that play, the characters are um the characters that were fanny and trish um the actors who played them i'm not there i think they're new they're brand new actors which is so great to see brand new black faces um, because we've kind of been, they've, we've really been stuck for a minute now um, with black the black actors that have sort of been around for about like almost 40 years now. <clears throat> Most of them have been around by like 40 years, 30, 40 years now. And they just keep recycling the same characters, never creating new, never cre creating new black actors in Hollywood. But it seems like, you know, I, I feel like Barry Jenkins is, is going to try to like, get some new faces new talent um and that's what it seems like especially when it, i just saw his, i saw his um movie uh moonlight um and the new black faces new, i don't have no idea that's the first time i was um introduced to what's his name trevante Rhodes, i think who also played in bird box um but he was also in moonlight um but yeah all new black faces in moonlight um, pretty much new black faces in um, If Bill Street Could Talk. Um, I was not going to, when I went to go see this movie, well, before I went to go see this movie, I wasn't going to see it. I was like, oh, this is like, I'm not really a romance type of person. I have a few romance movies that I like, like Love and Basketball or something like that. Um, but for the most part, I'm not really a romance person because it kind of gets a little too sappy and a little too cliche. Um, so I really wasn't interested in seeing this movie because that's what I thought it was. Um, but then I was like, but then I real, but then they said, oh, it was based off the book by James Baldwin. And I was like, hmm. I was very, I was like, hmm, this is, in okay. Okay, so maybe it's not what it seems to be. And it wasn't what it seemed to be because the movie is much deep, deeper than like, a love's just some simple like gushy love story um this movie was i think i said it before in the peel uh review that like that was not good storytelling and um i can't wait to do this movie because I feel like this movie really shows us what good storytelling is and Barry Jenkins I feel like most definitely tells shows us what good storytelling is um the things that I love about this movie I think it's I just love about Barry Jenkins as a director from right for right now I you know he hasn't he, this is just his first two projects I mean the first two mainstream projects um he's supposed to be doing Native Son which I oh like I I'm going to go see that as well when it comes out, I think it might, did it already come out? I don't know, but I'm gonna go check that out, Native Son, um, and it's based off the book by Richard Wright, um, to see what he does with that, but, yeah, Barry Jenkins really loves to play with, like, silence in his movies, um, like, silence is a really big theme in his movies. Like, he, he really depends on his actors to really emote in the scenes, in scenes. Because sometimes they just say, they're, they just, they're just saying nothing. And they're just, you just, they just have these looks on their faces. And they're just, but the tension is so palpable. Basic like, storyline, basic plot of the movie is, is that Fani and Trish are these new black, I mean, they're these, you know, young black lovers um who grew up together as kids um you know in the same neighborhood Fani sort of comes from a little bit of a 
bougie background um and trish kind of a lower lower class more lower class black background um and but their i guess their fathers are best friends and they grew up as friends first and then i guess you know they grew up and fani got interested in trish and then he asked trish out and then that so on and so forth boy meets girl type of thing um typical love story but what happens is is that Fani gets accused oh Fani is also um an artist he's a sculptor um but Fani gets accused of raping a Latina a white Latina woman and they just pick any old nigga off the street and they choose Fani well we get later into this into the um movie we find out that the police officer that picks up Fani actually has had a vendetta against Fani because I guess he wanted to get him before for talking back to him or whatever in a previous scene um where he was accusing him of causing trouble at a grocery store when actually in actuality he was defending his girlfriend from this like this white guy that was trying to grope on her and so the police officer comes and he doesn't like the fact that Fani is challenging his authority and this is the same police officer that ends up picking up Fani in the end when it comes down to the rape of the um, white latina woman um he's like that's that's the dude that's the guy that does it and he no questions asked no nothing he gets put in jail locked up um and pretty much the whole movie is trish and her family um trying to get Fani out of jail because she's pregnant and they want to be married and have a family and all this stuff like that um but back to the silence of the movies the silence of the movie like there's these very silent moments like regina king when she's look she's done all that she can she's traveled all the way i think it's to puerto rico to find this woman um who was accused this man of who was accused this man of rape who, who she didn't even really see um she was just told pretty much to just choose somebody to just choose this person and they did they um she chose him um, and she travels all the way to Puerto Rico to try to find this woman so she can come back and recant her story and tell the truth. Um, and she, it doesn't work. Like the woman is distraught and honestly, like, I guess we were meant to feel bad for the woman as well because she was so distraught, but it's so hard because it's like, ugh, something bad happened to you, but you have really like ruined a whole man's life because like the police you are you are being you are colluding with the police to put this black man in jail for no reason um so like i i really have a hard i really had a hard time struggling with that at the end i guess that we were supposed to be made to feel bad that she had some type of psychological damage done to her which she did because she was actually raped but that i don't know if that is enough excuse for me to forgive her for like throwing a man's you know life away and taking him away from his child and taking away from his his um his wife or whatever well not his wife they don't actually become husband and wife because of this um but anyway she, there's a scene where she's looking in the mirror and she takes off her wig and she's just looking and it's like these it's these long scenes too and like it, that's what the, the acting the acting is really really done i know i said before in pills movie that i didn't think that winston dukes and lupita's acting was all that top par but like because because the scenes depend so much on silence the acting has to be it has to be almost perfect and regina actually ended, went on winning an oscar um for if bill street could talk um but that scene where she takes off her wig and she's just tired like she's just like y'all i done tried everything and i cannot get this boy out of jail i cannot get my son-in-law out of well technically to be son-in-law out of jail and she's just looking in the mirror like and it's like it's so like daunting because it's like she's staring straight at you in the camera lens the camera lens and one thing that i find funny about that is because they tell you like because i've done a, like they tell you not to look in the you're not supposed to look in the camera like that's a like a film like don't look in the camera but barry jenkins makes his actors look at like makes her look in the camera 
I mean, she's like looking right at you and, like through the screen and and her eyes and her face and then it's just it's just like she's just tired and she's fed up and she's just like god please let's do something um but yeah and even the moment where like uh because this movie really moves back and forth in time so we get so we have this main time frame of when Fani and Trish are building a relationship. And then we have this other time that is flipping to where they're trying to get him out of jail. So those two time frames are kind of mirroring, bouncing back and we're bouncing back and forth in this movie through those time frames all the time. And there's this one time frame <clears throat> where Fani and Trish and his friend... I think his name is Daniel. Uh, Daniel has just gotten out of jail. There's this moment where he's talking about his experience in jail because he's come back to see his friend, Fani. And Fani invites him over for dinner and Trish is going to cook dinner. And there's this moment where he's talking. And this is also the guy who, the guy who plays Daniel is also the guy from Atlanta um, who plays Paperboy. Um, and he's talking in this very low, like and slow about he's not saying exactly what happened to him in jail but it's just the way he's saying it the slowness of his voice the fact that he like is going to like this very dark place even the scene the scene he plays with like Barry Jenkins plays with color and light a lot in these movies as well the scene even gets physically darker and it's like this shadow is like creepy being in slowly as he's talking about how what they did like he doesn't say what they did to him in jail but pretty much we get the sense that he was tortured in jail and then it just he just stops talking and there's just silence and there's just, there's just silence and then Trish like cracks a joke and like it's perfectly timed it's like it's perfectly timed like everything is perfectly timed and she cracks his joke to relieve the tension and they go back to joking around and whatever. But it's also meant to be a foreboding scene because we know that Fani is going to jail. And some of the next scenes are Fani, we see Fani behind the glass when it flips back and forth, when it flips to uh, Trish visiting Fani in jail. Like he comes back one time and he's like beaten and bruised up and he just looks like broken. He just looks broken. He just looks broken. He's not really saying a whole lot, but he just looks broken. And you know, like, whatever Daniel was talking about is now happening to him while he's in jail. Whatever violence that Daniel was talking about is now happening to him while he's in jail. Um, so, yeah, I really love the, the fact that he played, that Barry Jenkins plays with silence in his films. He also plays with silence in Moonlight, which I also liked, um, where the characters don't say much. And I, and I, I, I really think that it is, it is a real talent to like get across what you're trying to say without having this without saying very little like i really appreciate people who can do that um i really appreciate that because i i feel like it's a rare talent and not everybody has it um i most definitely don't have it. <laughs> i most definitely don't have it um in terms of the writing that i do i say a lot um <laughs> but um but like i really appreciate people who can like artists that like their thing is like i'm going to say a whole lot and like no words are going to be spoken <laughs> and you just feel it and that is that's something special um so i think barry jenkins really has a knack and a talent for that um he also loves to work with color in his films in moonlight it was like these purples and blues in this film, it is really these like these yellowish golds and reds and oranges, and it's just a book specifically like I think it's more the yellows and uh, reds, but yeah, I just really like and I think the yellow is supposed to like so one thing that is always happening is that Trish is always wearing yellow. Trish is always wearing yellow. And I and it's supposed to and almost like she's this divine person or this person that is supposed to be of royalty. Especially she's always wearing real yellow when Fani is around, um, and then when she's not when he's not around, she's wearing like bits of yellow. Like she might be yellow, wearing like one one scene she's like wearing yellow boots, 
like when she's um walking down the street or something but when she's with fanny she's always wearing a yellow dress or a yellow whatever and i think it's supposed to, it's supposed to signal that she's like divine and heavenly and because she just looks radiant she looks radiant um he even hands like as a gift to tell the tell uh, trisha's mother uh, regina king that you know they're together now like she gives her a sculpture that is yellow she he gives her a sculpture that is like this gold golden yellow and like i'm bringing like it's like bringing a gift to the queen or whatever whatever for your daughter's hand that's like his daughter's that's like um i'm asking your daughter's hand in marriage type of thing like he gives her a gift and it's like this yellow divine looking sculpture um wooden sculpture um and, and the reds that's another thing I want to talk about is the red, the red that is in this, like, at one point, they're walking down the street, and the red is sort of just, he uses the red in a different way. The red is sort of just lurking around. It's like this very ominous presence, the red that is in there, and it's very bright, so you notice it. There's one moment where they're walking down the street in the rain, and there's like this bright red, um there's this bright red umbrella over their head it's like the red is the violence the red is the danger the you know you know the uncertainty you know um it's always lurking around it's always there it's always present um no matter even in good movies like in that moment where they're holding the umbrella like they're about to you know they just they just got done being on a date that went well or whatever i guess they'll go back have to go back to his place we all know what happens then. Da, 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 da. Um, but the red is lurking around. The red is there. Like, um, There's a moment where, uh, back to the grocery store, when we talked about the cop wanting to um, arrest um, Fonzie for causing trouble in the grocery store when he was just defending Trish from this like pervert, pervy groper, pervy, pervy white man groper. Um, <laughs> pervy white man groper but um they, she's buying tomatoes and so when the cop calls him out there to talk about you know what are you doing you know what are you you know what are you niggas doing in this uh nice white establishment messing up these nice white folks and da da da, da. you know um the man the police officer is about to like you know take Fonzie away you know pretty much <laughs> Um, and arrest him and Trish sort of steps in front and like Fonzie is very upset that Trish steps in front to protect him um, and so like at, there's also a white this white store owner comes out and like she dissolves the whole situation eventually and that's even a moment of silence as well like there's this moment of silence where you just don't know what's about to happen like is this man about to pull out his gun and shoot them shoot both of them or what's about to happen but the store owner comes out relieves the tension timing perfect timing perfect perfect placement perfect timing i'm telling you his timing barry jenkins timing is perfect um to relieve tension is perfect um and he comes she comes out and she disperses the whole thing she's like listen leave this man alone he was in here defending his you know girl or whatever um and then after the police officer leaves you know finally sort of yells at trish like do not protect me like do not protect me because you're gonna get hurt like and she's like i want to protect you da, 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 da. and they're kind of going back and forth about who should protect who which i really love that scene um who should be protecting who like this idea of like masculineness and like a man is supposed to protect a woman but we clearly see the woman protect the man and like who is supposed to be protecting who and should it really make you feel less of a man if your woman tries to protect you or not like i really love that tension that was in that scene um and can a woman protect a man and you know you know all the like all of these like very like the sexual politics 
um, that went on in that scene that was, I thought that was and it, nobody's nobody's nobody comes out straight out and says we're having a scene about sexual politics now we're going to be talking about we'll shoot a man for it just comes out naturally in the scene and Fonzie gets upset or whatever because he feels like you know I guess I don't know if he's upset it could be taken either way it could be taken that he's upset because uh he feels a little bit like emasculated but it also could be taken in the way because he talks about how you know he doesn't want her to get hurt so that's also why um so i think it's a little bit of both i think both of those coexist there um and so he ends up throwing the tomatoes because he's, hold he's holding the tomatoes he's throwing he he throws the tomatoes in frustration that first of all the scene even happened and that she had to protect him from the man and that she, you know she was put herself in danger and all that stuff kind of stuff um that the pervy proper guy got gets away and nothing happens to him but they're act they're you know confronted as if they're criminals um and he throws the tomatoes that they just bought <laughs> <laughs> against the wall and there's this close-up of the tomatoes as if it's like blood splatter and it's sort of another foreboding scene because that's the scene with the officer and this officer like we said it before is going to go and he's going to accuse Fonzie later on of rape of raping the white Latina woman um and like that's what I was talking about when I talked about like in Pills movie where I said that those lines on that man's head were not storytelling. Like, understand that the the fact that like he like Fonzie gets upset, they have an argument about, you know, the situation that just happened, and in frustration he throws the tomatoes at the wall and the wall it creates this sort of scene. He does this close up of a scene that sort of looks like blood splatter. Um, like somebody just died, um, or somebody just got hurt. And like that is storytelling. That is using symbolism and all that stuff. A line like just having a man stand there with one 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 on his head, and he don't have no lines. He just standing there. That's his whole purpose. Is just to stand there. Like everything should have a purpose and an intent, and it should come across naturally. And it should come across naturally through, from the story. From the story. It should come out naturally from the story. The symbolism should come out naturally from the story. That's why I said this Peel stuff was not. It was not storytelling. It was just signposting. And I do not like signposts. I'm going to say it over and over. You're going to hear me say this over and over again. If you put up a signpost, I'm going to hate it. I do not like signposts. I know what a stop sign looks like. I know, <laughs> like, I know, I know all the signs and stuff. I took my test. I don't need signposts in my movies. Like, I get enough signposts when I drive and go on the street. Like, I don't need signposts in my movies. Nothing but the truth. And they can't handle it. That's too goddamn bad. Like, I really felt close to these characters. Like, these characters really become family, especially that first scene. The very first scene is of the movie is Trish telling her parents, because this is already, again, this is the first scene, Fonny is already in jail. <laughs> this is like, no, that's a, this is not the first scene, but it's like the second scene of the movie. Um, Fonny is already in jail, and she has to tell her parents that she is pregnant, and they are not married. Um, <laughs> and they are not married. Fonny does not have a solid job she doesn't have a solid job um and she has to tell her parents that you know she and she tells her mother first she goes to regina king and she tells her mother first that she's pregnant and she's i guess regina's like i'm gonna make some good food so we can you know i'm gonna make some good food and we're gonna bring out the wine so when we tell your father and it's really this build up this is really nice tense moment because what you think is gonna happen is that the father is gonna like cuss her out call her a whore and a slut and you know say she's fast and all this stuff and he sits down he eats he drinks and he only drinks a little bit. He doesn't drink a whole lot. It's not like he gets drunk or nothing like that. He's clearly in his mind. And she tells him that he, she tells him that she's pregnant. 
and he's like, hey, like, <laughs> he's excited. Like, he's he's excited because, um, you know, he doesn't feel like they did anything wrong. He's, he actually assures, he's like, y'all didn't do anything wrong. Y'all are in love. Y'all plan to get married anyway. Like, I, I want a grandchild. Like, I'm ready to have a grandchild and everything. And, you know, I don't think anything that you did was wrong or nothing like that. You know, you know, let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. Um, and it was just really nice to see that, like, cause one thing I also hate is respect. This movie was very anti-respectability politics. It was anti the respectability politics. And I have been waiting on a movie like this forever. Cause I cannot with the respectability politics, but they could, that's the thing, but he, that's the thing. The timing is so perfect cause it's, it's anti respectability politics. Um, but at the same time, he, like, Barry Jenkins still is like, I have to have that, we, well, we have to have that perspective in there. Um, but, you know, the the sister, the sister of, Tr Trisha's sister tells her, like, you know, like, because I guess she's looking like, you know, I did something wrong. And, you know, she's like, unbow your head, sister, you didn't do anything wrong. And the father's like, yeah, you didn't do anything wrong. Like, y'all are in love. Y'all are practically married anyway. Y'all been friends forever. Like, what? Like, y'all didn't, what? No, like, <laughs> y'all didn't do nothing different than what we, me and your mama did. Like, <laughs> like he's not judging. Or he's not being judgmental. He's not calling her fast or a whore or nothing like that. But that is where the next scene, the next portion of the scene comes in. Because they're like, we should call over Fani's family to let them know. So they can celebrate with us. <laughs> And there's a little bit of like a, cause Trish's Trish's father is friends with Fonny's father, but the mothers are not friends, and the sisters are not friends. Like Trish's sisters are not friends with, um, their little their their bougietta. Like they they real bougie, they think they all that they're real holier than thou. They come in with their nose up, like literally their noses up, um. And they just act, they just act real nasty. Like the mother's like her son does it. Then when they come over, like the father's all you know happy and like we're gonna have a child. We're gonna have a we're gonna have a grandbaby. I gotta you know I gotta I gotta go back to work because I can get my grandbaby stuff. I gotta get Fanny out of jail. Da 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 da. And the mother's like you know he deserves to be in jail. And you know you know y'all out here sinning. Y'all out here sinning. And y'all out here doing all this stuff. And she's pretty much talking trash to Trish the whole time and to the family the whole time and I guess the last straw is um they start arguing the mother Fonnie's sisters and Trish's mother and her Trish's sister and Trish start arguing with her and they they you know Trish's I mean Fonnie's mother walks up on Trish and she's like starts to like curse the baby in the name of Jesus like Jesus Christ she curses the baby in the name of God and like the father comes her husband comes in and slaps the shit out of her like she he's like because one thing about black folks is that we are very like do like we believe in spirits we believe in curses we believe in all that stuff um especially we're very religious we believe in all that stuff we don't but we believe in good and bad energies you know do not touch pregnant women if you don't know them you know you're not allowed to pray over certain like don't pray over me because i don't know you like that like, we are very serious about energy and spirits and people having bad spirits and energies on them and like that was a real when she did that i was like ooh, that's a real no no that was a real no no and like that her husband punches the crap like he slaps the crap out of her and they're like, oh my goodness, I can't believe you did that. I can't believe you did that. But she kind of did something that was unspeakable. Like she really did something that is, I, you have to, you have to just know, like, be within, I think, black culture to know black culture and to know that that is just unacceptable. That is like unforgivable. Like if you curse somebody's child, unborn child, and you walk up on them and touch the belly to touch, to curse their unborn child in the name of God, like, like it's, it's not good that he slapped her, but it's not like it's unforgivable or like 
it's uh, <laughs> people people in the theater went oh but well she did got I mean they kind of went they went ooh but like it was it was like a, well she kind of did deserve it because that was kind of a no no people <laughs> but people in the theater um but because <laughs> it's just a no no it's just a no no in black culture that you just don't you can't even pray over certain people won't let you pray over them because like I don't know what you got on your spirit um. But it was so nice to see that also play out in, like, the religious toxicity that exists within black families. Um, but it was also nice to see the love that existed within black families. Because um, a lot of times in a lot of these movies, they just like to see us fighting each other and kicking each other down and don't get me wrong some of that happens and we see that in this movie as well um you know the mother of Fani pretty much you know disowns her son and is like well he deserves to be in jail and y'all are out here sinning and you know if the lord wants you out of jail he'll get you out of jail you know <laughs> she's like she's throws him to the wolves and it's like y'all i had a baby out of wedlock and all this stuff um but yeah, but it was, but we also got to see the kindness of black f family, um, which is really nice. First of all, the fact that this fa this movie has two black fathers in it that are very involved in their children's lives is a plus. Like, we're breaking down stereotypes, we're breaking down, like, just falsehoods and tropes about black people in general. Um... I just love it. I love it. Two black fathers, and they're both in very, they lo they're they loving fathers. At one point, Trish is, like, having these really bad contractions and these really bad pains at night, and, like, her father just comes and holds her. Her father just comes and holds her. Like, he doesn't kick her. There's so much talk about, oh, if you have a child out of wedlock, I'm going to kick you out of my house, and da 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 And then you see this black man just love on his little girl. You know... It's just like, thank you, thank you, Barry Jenkins. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for showing what black, like, black art is supposed to do. Like, what black art is supposed to be. Like, that moment actually made my girlfriend cry when she saw that. She was like, oh, that is just so... It, it was a really sweet moment. Like, that was one of the sweetest moments in the movie to me. Um... And but we also see like other stuff happen and like the fact that black men have to do stuff in order to have to do things that are not ethical in order to survive. Like we see, the, you know, Trisha's father and um, Fani's father, like they're stealing clothes to sell them. They're stealing clothes from the docks to sell them on the side, to make more money, to pay for this lawyer, um, to try to get Fani out of jail. Like, they're having to, like, kind of set up a crime business, kind of. <laughs> they're kind of setting up a crime business, sort of lifting the white men they work for, lifting their clothes off the docks to sell them, to sell them and get more money. You know, stealing. They got to resort to, resort to stealing. And that's another thing, like respectability politics. People are talking about why do black folks steal? Why do black folks do this? Why do people really be acting like black folks just be doing crime just to do crime? No, black folks be doing crime because of poverty, like because of poverty, because <laughs> because white supremacy has put them in poverty, like and made them force them to resort to certain. Um, certain actions to survive i mean listen like it, it happens it's not people be acting like black folks be doing stuff out of no for no reason and it's just weird like black folks be doing poverty be having poverty crimes like they, they be doing poverty crimes really so we need to be calling it is poverty crimes crimes you do because you're in poverty and you need to survive poverty crimes that's what it need to be called don't try to defend the truth it defends itself and if you're too stupid and too ignorant and don't know and too slow because a lot of people are brainwashed oh a lot of niggas go oh i went to yale what well, nigga you should have went to jail and learned something people, like even the white people in this film are sort of having to come to in to, uh, having to grapple with their own privilege the white lawyer who who knows who trish and um uh, because
Trisha's sister is actually a lawyer and she works for a lawyer's office. And so she hires, she she gets one of her like lawyer friend, not lawyer friends, but the higher ups, not, not higher ups. He's kind of like the low, he's sort of like this new young guy who's sort of low on the totem pole um, to help out with the case because he's the cheapest because <laughs> he's new and he's young. Um, and like he's, he's having to, he's, he's trying in the movie he's trying to get it get ahead when this like case comes on his lap like he's trying to get in with the big boys he's trying to get into the boys club the white boys club and <laughs> he's trying to get into the country club of lawyers um of the bar and he gets hit with this case and it's just like a whole nother monster and he's like and he doesn't say anything he he literally he literally does not speak that much in this movie but he looks, it's that scene, again, where he looks around like he's in, like, the country club, whatever space that the lawyers are in or whatever they're at. And he looks around, he's drinking his drink, he's drinking his uh, alcohol or whatever, his, his drink that he ordered from the bar. And he's just, like, he's sweating bullets. Like, he's, like, it's just, like, he's looking around, like, these these people, like, really, like, have no morals and no ethics, like, because he's been trying to get this man finally out of jail because he knows that he was falsely accused. All the evidence says he was falsely accused. But, like, he's having to, like, jump through hoops just to get people to listen to him. And he's like, these people are, these people are fucking unethical. These people are immoral. They don't give a care in the world. They're selfish. Like, is this what I really, he's looking like, is this what I really signed up for? Like, he's really having to come to terms with his own privilege. And like who he works for and who he works with and who he wants to be. And all of that comes through in one scene where he says nothing. <laughs> where he says nothing. He says absolutely nothing. All of that is, per is portrayed in one scene where he says nothing. And that is a talent. That is talent. That is storytelling. That... That is what movies should be like, and that was that is what movies should feel like. Um, but yeah, this was this movie was amazing. Um, I think Barry Jenkins. I can't wait to see Native Son. What he says with Native Son, like Barry Jenkins has like two great films under his belt right now. I actually have the book. If Bill Street could talk right here, I'm actually probably gonna do like a. Um, I'm actually probably gonna do a review. I'm gonna. I had. I, I got this book like two months ago, um, but I haven't not been able. I have not been able to read it because every time I, I've been trying to. I, every time I, I when I got this book, I kept getting more books. Uh, <laughs> I kept getting more books, and so I was like, "Well, these would be quicker to read, so let me just read those." And then, and then it became one thing after the next, and then it was school, and then it was this, and then it was that, and then it was. So, uh, but the summer is coming up. I have no more excuses. I do plan to read this book and to do a compare and contrast of if Bill Street could talk um, the movie with the book to see what Barry Jenkins leaves out of the movie and what are the differences between James Baldwin's version and Barry Jenkins' version because I heard they are not the same. That they are not the same. Some people have said it is better than the movie. That the movie is actually like fails in comparison to the book. I am most definitely reading this book. I encourage everybody to go read the book and get the book. How much is this book? Um, how much was this book? I feel like this book was like 15 bucks or something like that. Um, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But actually, yeah, it was actually, it's $14.95. It's, it's 15 bucks. Um, so this book was 15 bucks. If you want to go read the movie, want to go read the book, please go read the book. I'm going to try to do it by, I'm going to say July. I'm going to try to have um, a comparison with the movie and the book uh, video up. Um, and this will be my first book review. Um, like I said, I'll probably only do these every once in a while. Oh, as I said, once a month, but really I'm just going to go with the flow. Every once in a while, whenever I read a good, read a good book, it might be mostly poetry books because I read a lot of poetry books, but yeah. I'm going to give this movie, this movie is a five 
out of five stars. It is, and I will not give too many movies five out of five stars. And I really have no issues with this movie at all. Like, I have no issues with this movie at all. Like, I, I mean, there might be some issues after I read the book. And so I might change. <laughs> I might change. I might change my mind. That is not a five out of five. But this movie... I think it's a five out of five. This movie is a five. This movie is a five star movie. For real, for real. And like, yeah. It deserved more at the Oscars instead of that, whatever that was with the green book. Whatever. There's a whole lot of. No, I'm not, I'm not even going to watch that movie. I, I refuse to watch that movie. Um, but yeah. This is a five out of five star movie. I really recommend every. I think every black family needs to go see this movie. I think, well, and also white families as well. I think everybody needs to go see this movie because there's something in er that everybody needs to see. There's something in there that everybody needs to see. Um, I think that, yeah, but yeah, I'm not gonna get, I'm not gonna get too much in it because this video is already very, very long. Um, but I will see you guys next time.